<laughs> Patrons inside Krabby Dad's Bar in Steenhatchee, Florida, surely know how to have a good time. But lately, the good times have been hard to come by. Just ask any resident of Steenhatchee, and they'll all tell you the same thing. How is business? It sucks. <laughs> That's all? That's it. Like most other small seaside communities in Florida, business in Steenhatchee took a nosedive after the BP oil spill started making headlines this past summer, despite the fact not a single drop of oil or tar washed ashore. The steep drop in tourism took its toll on this small community, which was already reeling from the effects of the housing bust. The economy kind of crushed the condos quite a bit. Uh, we're still recovering from that. Brian Smith is a charter boat captain and decade-long resident of Steenhatchee. When I met up with him at a local wharf, he showed me just how devastating the housing bust was. Those condos across the river right there are unoccupied. Uh, a lot of people built these condos in anticipation that the land values and everything was going up and then the house of cards fell. Now that the town cannot sell brand new oceanfront condos, Smith says the main source of profit is fishing. I think the number one industry in Steenhatch is really the trout fishery on the grass flats. Uh, we got offshore fishery there, uh, the fishing in general crabbing, uh, we live off the water, and then you have the service industries that are contribute, like the marinas, the hotels, uh, a couple of restaurants we got here. It's a, it's a small community, so um, we live off the environment that we're, we're around. Right across the street from Krabby Dad's Bar sits Roy's Restaurant, specializing in seafood. Roy's offers picturesque views of the Steenhatchee River, and during the busy summer months, Roy's is normally packed with customers. But this past summer, fish wasn't the only thing frying. So was their bottom line. Linda Wicker is the owner of Roy's and is also a real estate agent in the Steenhatchee area. We were beginning to see a little bit of a pickup hmm, around April, March and April, and then the oil spill came. As far as the, the real estate end of it, it just shut down, totally shut down. She says business at the restaurant, just like the real estate market, was also slowed by the threat of oil. We would get questions in the restaurant, where's your seafood coming from? Where are you sourcing it? Is the grouper local? Are the crabs local? Or what about the mullet? Is the food safe? So we got a lot of that, although it was, um, you know, a long way away from us. The oil was far away, but so were the customers. On the day I visited, the riverside dock behind Roy's, which offers beautiful views of the sunset, sat empty with music playing for the empty tables. Even though the leaking oil well was capped months ago, nobody seems to be sure whether or not the crisis is over. In a report released just last month, the State Department of Environmental Protection said they could find no evidence of any underwater oil plumes. Steve Otwell is a seafood specialist for the Florida Sea Grant Program, which has been studying the effects of the oil spill. He believes people's perceptions will gradually improve. I think we've suffered through the worst consequences, and we're in the what I'm calling the recovery phase now. And I'm seeing it's getting better, particularly with the holidays. Otwell attributes any recent drop in business to the poor economy, not worries about oil. It's difficult to tease out a difference between apprehension, any residual apprehension, versus the fact that people are having to make economic choices and seafood is not inexpensive. While Otwell remains positive about the future, the owner of Roy's Restaurant is not as optimistic. The perceived ideas that people had about what was happening here is what hurt us, not the actual you know, damage from the oil, but what they perceived was happening or was going to happen. I think that same thing is going to continue to go, and I think uh, until there is some sort of a reasonable explanation as to where in the heck all the oil went and where is it, 
I, I think that's that's still going to happen. The winter months are a typically slower period for businesses around Steenhatchee as less tourists come to fish when the water is colder. So a true answer to the question of whether or not small fishing towns will ever recover from the perceived oil contamination will have to wait until this summer. In the meantime, residents like those at Krabby Dad's Bar can only hope things improve. I'm hopeful, always hopeful around Steenhatchee. Really? Mm -hmm. For Florida's 89.1, I'm Trent Kelly.